Recording is in progress. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and share the goals and objectives template that I shared uh, via email with everybody prior to this meeting. And you'll see some, um, as we kind of go through it here, you'll see some uh, track changes uh, where I've gone in and started to edit the document based on the input that we've uh, received so far. And so um, the first goal uh, that we have there is improve user-friendly communications uh, from city to residents. Um, so under this, taking a look at centralizing communication, um, creating a position or department, uh, increasing methods of communication using technology and continuing to assess technology for uh, how it could improve communications, then increasing the amount of easily accessed public information um, and um, utilizing uh, beacon, laser fish, and other internet sources. Um, and if we're putting together frequently asked questions documents, uh, making sure that we post those to the city's website. So the underlines are uh, input that I've received so far uh, related to this goal. And we'll just go ahead and open it up and see if for those who are in attendance today, if there was any other things you'd like to discuss related to uh, this goal. One of the things that I had written in our uh, notes in a number of meetings ago was discussions about having a dashboard on okay. the city website that could just okay. kind of be like an initial at a glance kind of hub spot for any ongoing projects or programs that people might be looking for more information about um and i thought maybe we go under centralized communication sure this is going to be credited as luke's um <laughs> adjustments that he's making but we'll make sure <laughs> Function. And we can go in a wordsmith afterwards. Yeah. So um, I know in Mandy's comments, some of the things that she had mentioned were like defining a like not necessarily quantity, but something for increasing the amount of information. So because I know she had had the concern during the last meeting. They could say people could say, like, oh, I added three pieces of information or something to whatever, and then that's been increased but is that to the level that we want i don't necessarily know that it makes sense to like create an actual like hard number or like quantity or definition of, but addressing that in some way might be helpful i just don't know how <laughs> it was some kind of like um not to create an annual set of goals for the expansion of yeah or something like that i was thinking that number three for instance when mm -hmm. it says increase the amount of information i was thinking expand because increasing is just you know we had more of the same uh yeah. to me i, I want to make okay, sure there's yeah. focus on expanding so for instance if you're not if you have data you could put out there but but we're and i think ah, you probably presenting. meant the same thing but yep. it's more explicit yeah. okay how about increase and expand yeah uh, yeah it's just you know yep because I don't know right now, do you have permit information out there like for building permits and stuff? Not online, no. Yeah, see, so that's some of the stuff that Beacon can carry, or you can do it through other systems. That, that we could add to it. Yeah, because, you know, and expand the amount. You know, one thing, and I don't, it wasn't public information, right? Now. Yep. But I know, like, if I see somebody and on their house and it's my neighborhood, <laughs> I'm like, see a permit. Yeah. Because you know, I want to make sure it's kosher with the city, you know, rather than calling you guys. Like, and better yet, how much? Yeah. <laughs> What's the permit valuation? Yeah, yeah. 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 And we've had a lot of um, talk about that <laughs> in some of our other commissions as well. You know, can we get certificates of appropriateness online so people aren't shocked when a historic building is going for something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, people are generally curious about anything that happens in town. So the more you can direct, you know, answer the questions online, the better you're going to be. You guys have less, less mm -hmm. to do. <laughs> so and related to your your comment, uh, Mandy also had a comment about like an annual review type yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that would be hard to do citywide, but I think that annually reviewing the progress that we've made on the comprehensive plan yeah. would be something that would be really valuable. I agree. So yeah. um, that's that's how I was looking at addressing okay. that. And I think that in that annual report, that's where we could say, hey, you know, we increased communication, you know, and we did it through this fashion, this fashion, and this fashion. Mm -hmm. And during that reporting process to the planning commission, which is what it would be good, 
that's where it would be up to them as representatives of the public to say two's not enough. We want you to do more. Okay. That type of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Kind of along those lines, um, like what Emily said in her comments, she was wondering about like adding a success measured by component or like success indicators, maybe I was thinking could be a term. Um, because I was thinking you could do something like that. So like what you had just said about how uh certain information could be added to beacon. Um we can, I guess I don't know how into the weeds and how detailed to get on certain things, but we could be like, these are certain examples of what we're envisioning, not necessarily that you need to do X, Y, and Z, but this is like the direction that we were envisioning as a group um, in terms of, yeah, success indicators or something like that. And I'm, I'm not opposed to adding success indicators or what um, uh, Emily mentioned as success measured by I just want to uh, make sure that it's not what you said, yeah. you know, in terms of specific things, um, just because this document is a little bit more general and we want to allow that flexibility. Yeah. So but you would envision like an annual process of looking at the capitals of plans, general direction and yep. saying, okay, now we're going to create a couple of goals for this year. Yep. Uh, we're going to do at least five things and measure of success is whether we accomplish those five things or to what degree we accomplish those five things. Exactly. And the measure of success too under each goal is to what degree are you accomplishing each of the objectives and the strategies under right. Okay. Um, Emily, so I guess actually that was one thing that if that's the if that's something the committee really wants to add into, I don't see how it could hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would do then is at the end of the section after um, all of the objectives, put that information in. So success measured by or success indicators. Mm -hmm. I like indicators. Mm -hmm. Who does too? I do as well. Okay. I mean, it's almost a goal to hold ourselves more accountable as well. Yeah. In and of itself. I just, I think that there's multiple different ways that you can indicate success. And I just don't want, for some reason, yeah. if we don't do one to say that we failed. Right? Yeah. Type of thing. No. Yeah. To have it be like, oh, I had a like term I was thinking of, but basically just like, yeah, examples. Examples. Not, yep. Not, yeah. Not an, I got you. We're on the same wavelength. Like, yep. I got you. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Should we move on to the next one here? Brianna, anything from you on that one? I was just going to add the same thing about the success um, component. I think that's an important piece to add for accountability. So. Sure. Sounds good. Okay, we'll go ahead and add that. And we'll go and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add that under each goal. So not just this one, but the other ones as well. Okay. I also, oh, Go sorry. Ahead. Nope. <laughs> I also appreciated Emily's idea about the cost impact of each um, suggestion. I feel like that uh, gives us kind of that low hanging fruit stuff that we've talked about throughout and then um, can allow us to make more long term goals for the more expensive pieces potentially. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was one thing too that. I think it'd be difficult for us to know how much each one of these things is going to cost and assign a ranking as part of this process. That's a limiting factor. I think that as we work through the document, we'll be able to see which things we can implement based on our current budgeting. I agree that that's kind of a good way of, of uh, taking a look at what, you know, we can, what is low hanging fruit and, and what isn't. But I think that kind of borns its, it, that kind of happens naturally and organically as we work through the document. Um, so I don't think we necessarily need to assign dollar figures um, to each um, section, and I, I think it'd be pretty tedious to, to do so. I think in a, in a more specific type of plan, um, where like you're specifically looking at a project, that might be a good way to go, but with the comprehensive plan, some, I think we might getting, be getting a little bit too much into the weeds on that one. So. That's my input on that one. Okay. 
The next um, is building residence capacity to interact with the city. And Emily did have a um, suggestion about um, combining that with this goal is enhancing residence interaction with the city. I did, however, want to try and keep it separate because to me, the, the second goal here is building residence capacity to interact with the city. That's focused on an individual and an individual's ability to interact with the city versus enhancing residence interaction with the city. That is the city, meaning the people who work for the city and or programs and services that the people who work for the city use in order to interact with the public. So one is focused on people outside of city hall. The other one is focused on people inside city halls and programs and processes that are um, determined within city hall. Maybe as a part of each of these, because that makes a lot more sense. And I, I agree after you explained it. I guess when we put this together, would it be better if we kind of like change the wording of the goal or sure. if we just had like a small explanation, like even just a sentence under each one of the goals to just better clarify yep. what it's getting at? I, I definitely because because I get it, but beater. Um <laughs> <laughs> do it beater. Beater. Do a beater. Fine. That's uh, based. Person outside of City Hall. Okay. Got it. I'll go in there and adjust that. I yeah, definitely. Okay. And then maybe what I could do is try and let me see if I can get this on one piece of one page here. That way we're not dealing with the page break and zoom in. All right, um, so under that, um, I didn't make any changes on the first uh, objective. Uh, on the second objective uh, is where I've uh, incorporated Mandy's suggestions uh, related to reaching out to parent, people of varying ages, life stages, abilities. I basically copy and paste what she had mm -hmm. uh, versus the underrepresented populations uh, reference. And so um, then I, you can see the additional changes there. Um, in addition to technological solutions to allow asynchronous participation in public mm -hmm. hearings. Um, Luke and I had a great meeting with a, a vendor this morning um, where they are using asynchronous technology in Golden Valley um, for public hearings. Um, basically what you do is, is you put everything out there uh, a few days before a meeting and a public hearing in particular, and people can comment all the way up until, and even during the public hearing, but there, it, it's a way for people to not have to be at the meeting, yeah. essentially, but still make sure that their uh, input is being uh, received. That's awesome. Um, Could the go two bullet point be uh, restated a little more clearly? This one is? This yeah, one? Two, yeah, they understand yep. who a decision will affect and involve them. Sure. It just seems like, I mean, I understand what you're getting at, but. Hmm. Stakeholder and impact analyses. <laughs> You want to get too put it in. Yeah, yeah, a, okay, I'll, I'll put look at How it. How about right. instead, and this sure. is very specific, but adopt a co-design methodology. Okay. Um, it, it is specific. Co-design is meant to engage uh, the populations who are impacted, who are less often likely to participate on their own or Yep. have some kind of barrier to participation. Okay. So like probably I mean, define it for people. Yeah. 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 So just Googling it, the definition that Pope pops up says co-designing is a in a policy context means that all stakeholders identified in the network map are involved at the inception, design, and implementation phases of the work. Yeah. And so it also it specifically means uh as pointing out in the inception part that um a process for any project or program or whatever is being considered or developed. Uh, step zero is to engage with yep. the community. Yep. I like including the phrase co-design because it does cover things like power mapping, stakeholder analysis, impact analysis. Yeah. It's very helpful in that regard because it's encompassing. Mm -hmm. And whether or not this ultimately becomes a co-design quote unquote process or a process derivative of that will really mm -hmm. be up to whatever the implementation step is for the 
But I also think not every city project is a co-design project. Mm -hmm. Right. Some that are more, and, and so I, mm -hmm. I think that, that that's where I put appropriate up there. It basically have to do, you have to depend on the discretion of staff. Yeah. And just make sure you're hiring level-headed people that mm -hmm. <laughs> want input. If we wanted examples, some of the examples I've heard this group say are things like street projects, so like street reconstructions, mm -hmm. and probably other large-scale infrastructure, and then probably also things like development opportunities for such as street projects. Was the site that you found was that the U of M design center or whatever? Design street projects, infrastructure projects. Uh, yeah. uh and public development proposals. Yeah, probably public. Yeah. Uh, we don't control what private people get before the bring it to the public process. Mm -hmm. Projects. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the same way what I typed in is now not what I typed in before. <laughs> Different websites showing up. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Consider a co design process for appropriate city projects such as street projects, infrastructure projects, and public development proposals. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would also maybe throw in something about like, um, like larger scale programming changes. I don't quite know how to put that. Why don't you think about it? Okay. You can always send it to me after the fact. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Um, one thing I was thinking of for number two, just in general, the areas that you had um, added based on what Mandy said for varying ages, life stages, abilities, races, socioeconomic level. Um, I'm just think, like thinking, throw something in there, like general statement of like and something about identity, um, just generally stating that because then whether it's a person's uh, sexual orientation, things like that, like other identities are more encompassing in there. Just because I feel like that could potentially make people feel like they're excluded if they're. We could put in et cetera. Yeah. Varying ages of identity. We've been yeah. using the word perspectives lately. I feel like varying ages, identities, sure. life stages. Identities, is, uh, yeah. Just meet, people. meet people where they're at. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Let's, let's go with identities. Okay. Well, okay. Who do you identify as or yeah. how do you want to be addressed is important. Okay, great. And then um, the third one, um, we're not just reaching out to new residents. All residents, of course, you want to reach out. I do think it's important for us to emphasize reaching out to new residents, though, mm -hmm. since they're brand new to the community. Long term residents may still have some difficulty with things, but they've been um, indoctrinated to a certain extent, I suppose. I suppose. So, um, Brianna, uh, any comments on uh, this one here? No, nope, none, none so far. Anything else from those who are here? All right, and next, I'm going to see if, again, I can get this all on one page here. You mentioned using the utility bills for yes. a way to convey information. Yep. Can you tell me why you can't do a direct debit for utility bills? I don't, I cannot tell you that, but. Yeah. Or why we need paper at all. I mean, it's, it's going to be a process that's just. I, I pay a, you, you need a pen? Yeah. We've got multiple pens in here. We can help them. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why do we need to sign our timesheets? So still, that's another question well, that I have. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we came to this HR thing. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. No, I can't tell you. Uh, yeah. But I'm just anything that we distribute yeah. citywide is kind yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't get the utility bill. It's like, <laughs> it should just be direct debit. You know, you should be on that option, I guess. Not really like something. Take it out of my account. It's better yet, my neighbor's account. All right. Uh, the next one is enhancing uh, residents' interaction with the city. And did I? Okay. I had more. I have more edits on the next one. So I just want to make sure that edits were showing up. So I didn't have a lot of edits, at least uh, originally under this one. Um, and uh, so you can see the different objectives that are listed there. And I'll just open it up, see if there's any comments or 
additions to this uh, goal. Wanted to throw in there something else that we've talked about a number of times, and I didn't quite know where it fits, like which goal, and maybe it's under this one, um, is about increasing partnerships with local institutions and organizations to be able to not only like uh, increase collaboration, but also to kind of like spread out the load. Um, I'm really specifically thinking back to our conversation about, um, shoot, what did you call them? Uh, like service organizations mm -hmm. like Rotary Club and such yep. and Lions who do do great things for the city like building shelters and stuff um, but can we do more uh, a lot of the work that I'm doing right now with Rochester is in trying to uh, compile and then synthesize and figure out a good way to operate a stewardship program because people want to be involved more like they want to manage the land they have the time they have tools and like how do you facilitate that like it's great that people want to be involved right yeah um, and and especially helping out with public claims um that definitely takes a lot of work and organization. Well, it takes a lot of organization on yeah. the city's part to be able to do that yeah i was going to say as like someone who handled all partnership related things for the Winona Outdoor Collaborative for the last mm -hmm. two years. It can, it's a great thing because there's a lot of people that are interested in doing things and helping. Um, but it also just creates more work for the, like for like, it would be more work for me sometimes to like work with someone else to do something than for me to just do it myself. Yep. And so I'm afraid of it turning into a situation where and then there's just like a lot of people moving parts where it creates more work for the city. Um, oh, no, I mean, create like a partnership with an organization who facilitates that kind of thing because the city doesn't have the capacity to run it on. Oh. Own. Like Red Lions yeah. coordinates all of the volunteer work. Yeah. And like they do that. It's not on John. John participates and Allison participates, but. Like for those, and I think we have that in a lot of other sections to just consider, you know, partnerships with other organizations to mm -hmm. uh, complete. Yeah, like Heritage Preservation had their meeting earlier today. Yeah, so much of it was partner with Winona County Historical Society, partner with Minnesota Shipbo, yep. partner with certified local government programs in order to do X, Y, Z. So it is really beneficial to have and. If accessible government feels like it's really important to include as a, as a goal or as an objective, like I completely understand. I do think it is mostly going to be addressed already with those zero subjects, frankly. Yeah. That's not a bad thing, though. Yeah. So maybe it would be an easy thing to put on here that, like, whenever the report card comes around, it's like, oh, tick, did it. Yeah. So we're writing it down just so I can cross it out when I go. I'm just keeping it. No, 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 no. How it it plays into accessible government more if other areas are already working on partnering with sure. people for their question. specific areas. So your example for like the rec alliance, mm -hmm. like Parks and Rec already is working on that. It's like we've been contacted to help with taking care of trail systems yep. and things like that. Um, so it, it's happening and I don't know if that is directly under one of these umbrellas. I think like the idea, I just don't know if it, here. Yeah, let me take a look. Let, let me think about that a little bit. See if there's a way we can fit it in. This. Sure. Yep. I mean, if there were a new goal area just about civic engagement. Yeah. Or community uh, stewardship, like I think that's where it would belong. But. Okay. Uh, the other one that we had talked about in an early meeting that I have notes on that I didn't see in here is in uh, partnering with universities for either a class or an internship or something like that. Um, and I think we can definitely much better utilize AmeriCorps members now that I know all about AmeriCorps. Let me see how we can add both partnering comments into into this definitely okay great 
Um, Mandy's one uh, Mandy's comment uh, related to sponsorships for assistance and funding events. Um, I just went ahead and go ahead and, and deleted that staff that acting as fundraisers. I guess what I was getting at is if you're doing an event, you're you're partnering with other organizations in order to be able to put it on. Um, but I think that's where that comes through in this one here, participation in events. Mm -hmm. So. I'm wondering if there's room in this uh, goal to specify some like diversified methods of communication, like under the first objective. I I think that's really important to clearly communicate the project rationale, but then I'm wondering like, how will it be communicated? Would it be through text? Would it be through a citywide email? Would it be through newspaper, radio? You know what I mean? Because if we think, we're communicating and we only use one method, we might be missing a large group of people. Okay. How about that? Thumbs up. All right, perfect. There's one more that I had initially put under the next goal. Sure but I don't, I think it might go under this one instead, okay. um, is explore collaborative solutions, uh, such as hackathons. Uh, we used them with City of Bloomington uh, for a couple oh, of things. Okay. They were actually super awesome. Um, there's a lot of that hesitancy about it, but they turned out really good. Um, or like simulations um, or exploring, like what do we do in a crisis if kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, something that I heard from Chuck, yeah, and yep. I've been hearing everywhere now, it's like once you see it, you can't not see it, um, is making little bets. So offering like small neighborhood grants for, you know, li little things um, that don't require too much involvement, oversight, funding won't do significant damage to public utilities. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. I'm thinking that that would fit under other subcommittees. Okay. Specifically in things such as the transportation subcommittee, because a lot of what you'd be looking to do is on public streets or in public right away. Um. So yeah, let, let me make sure that that's recorded. Small. Yeah, so basically like a three hundred dollar project type like of micro grant. Yeah, micro yeah. grant. Yeah. Micro grants. What was the first thing you mentioned? A hackathon. A hackathon. What is that? Yeah. Uh, so hackathons used to be mostly focused on like computer science people bringing others in and like using no code stuff. Um, but it really just became like a very intensive, super collaborative, interdisciplinary problem solving session that can go on anywhere from like four hours to a week. Great. We have a water hackathon every year. That's like virtual global thing. That's cool. Cool, sounds good. I'll go ahead and wordsmith uh, after the fact here. Um, shall we move on to the next one? All right, wider participation in city committees and elected offices. And this is where we're trying to get more people to participate in um, the different uh, committees and uh, on the council as well uh, that the city has. So again, I uh, changed the language related to underrepresented populations, added, um, build relationships with and, re and uh, because of some of the input received. Um, and then Emily also talked about uh, understanding barriers to participation better. Um, yeah. And then taking steps after that. So that's why I put it as number two and then move remove barriers to number three. Um, on one hand, I think that we don't know what the barriers are, but on the other hand, we do kind of know what some of them are. So I think we could go ahead and address, try and address some of them, but then also do a study to, to say, okay, we know that some of these are generally 
uh, barriers, but what else is out there? Type of thing. I love that. Um, and then three, we have um, Ken's uh, important point, considering term limits for board and commissions to foster a balance between experience and opportunity. And I just copy and pasted uh, experience and opportunity if you're okay with that, Ken. Yeah, I think that's the balance we're trying to make. Yep, exactly. Just want to make sure it wasn't copyrighted and trademarked or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, you got to open up more slots if you're going to to get more people from different backgrounds. Yep, and you know, I would agree sometimes it's good to have somebody who's been there for, for 10 years, 15, but when somebody's been on the committee for 45 years. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's and that's where you try to find, what's that balance? Yep, exactly. And then you'll get some mm -hmm. yep. um, Create a common template for board and commission information. Um, we have that out there, but it's not a common template. So it looks different in a lot of different areas. We're not allowed to also explore that same thing for city council seats, are we? What's that? For term limits? limits? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. Like that's a Minnesota state rule, not a local? Well, I don't know. They can. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they would have to change their, yeah, either the charter or something. I think that falls more in the political realm. Yeah. And I, I think the main thing that, it, and so yeah, it is different with, with council. I think the main thing with the process as it exists right now for boards and commissions is the, the Monica basically calls whoever is the mayor at the time and says, hey, this is person's coming up. Do you have any ideas or do you want to just reappoint them? And if they say, no, let's go ahead and reappoint them, then they get reappointed. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to change that to say, okay, yeah, let's reappoint them. Well, you know, you can only do that one more time. Yeah, but let's do it this time. But next time the term limit's coming up. So we got to make a decision. I think that definitely helps. Any other comments, questions related to this one? Additions? Um, maybe add identities again to that one ah, after ages. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And last but not least, enhance public understanding of city services and organization. This is vision and values um, for city uh, organization and then departmental as a means of better communicating what each individual department um, and what the city council has for a vision and values related to what they're doing. Any comments or questions related to that? I guess I'm wondering how council's own vision and values based on the individuals currently serving at that time uh, interacts with the fact that the comprehensive plan is supposed to be like the overlording document that city council is responsible to. Yeah, and so I can see the city council vision and values, you know, changing from time to time with referencing uh, the comprehensive plan vision and values. Maybe we should add that in there specific, explicitly. Under, understanding what you're getting at there, Sadie, and um, forgive me if this is a bit too much change, but would the objective perhaps to create a city council strategic plan and then have a sub strategy of identifying council vision and values in reference to the comprehensive plan. So setting up essentially a goal to have strategic plans for city council. That definitely sounds more actionable, like it'll make more progress. So if every two years, you know, after a new council is elected, mm -hmm. there's a free city council strategic planning session that identifies vision and values in addition to um having them create kind of a, a goal for their two years basically is that what maybe more what you're getting at or is it specifically you just wanted to have an understanding of their own personal visions and values well i like the strategic plan <laughs> <idea. laughs> sorry i didn't mean to muddy the waters i just i I guess I was maybe asking for more clarification about like which 
which in the hierarchy, which is above the other, city council individuals, visions and values, or comprehensive plan? Well, they, they have free choice, so they can decide they're lucky. That's the whole point. But the plan, the comprehensive plan is just to guide their, your, when you make decisions, you're supposed to look at the comprehensive plan and, and hopefully be in concert with them. If you, you still have the ability to make a decision contrary to the comprehensive plan if you want to. So you have that individual freedom or you have to follow the plan. So what they should do a strategic planning session where they can hash out how does this tie to the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. And then they can discuss among themselves. You know, if someone doesn't agree, maybe that doesn't have the majority, you know. So maybe the majority says we're gonna follow the plan. That's a nice idea, but it doesn't fit. So, um, but you need that tie together somehow, otherwise, otherwise you're just taking individuals and some might you'll say, well, this kind of applies to strategic plan or in concert with some art, you know. So if you have a group process, it kind of helps, I think. So yeah, that's yeah. what they do. Again, yeah, without, without engaging them, you know, you, you know, you know they need to also support what the staff's bringing to them that matches the conference of planning. Right. So, but you don't want it to be so concrete that you can't do anything outside the conference of planning. Yep. Because things come up over the years, you know, and you may not revise it. Mm -hmm. so, all right i have create council create city council two-year strategic plans identify means uh, to create a strategic plan with vision and value statements and i'll wordsmith this but referencing the comprehensive plan okay. it's kind of like what you're doing with the goals this year with the review how does this goal the department's putting forward yep. whether it's budgetary or whether it's just programmatic and how's that fit with does it in council with the council's plan? Yep, exactly. Okay. And yep. That sounds like the thing that I expected yeah. to be in something like this. Yeah, and it's got to be from the top of the organization through the whole process, otherwise it doesn't work. Can't have the high Forces people to get together and maybe well, yeah, find yeah. shared values. But you know, one department too. off kind of going this way and then <laughs> one going this way. That's kind of a way to keep them. Going. <laughs> okay. That's all that I have. Um, the one other thing that we talked about a couple of times, but I didn't see in here, is the staff and official trainings, um, especially considering things uh, like ableism and disabilities. Uh, public administration and ethics, um, the International Association of Public Participation, trauma. And I think that that's where we can, that would fit under um, residence interaction with the city. If we're taking a look at what either the city is doing or what kind of processes the city is doing uh, to enhance interaction. So better education of all the things you just mentioned, I think. Would, would fit under there. So I'll go ahead and add that. Could you send me the list that you just stated? Yeah. Um, the one other thing that I also did not, maybe it would go under the residence capacities interact, sure. um, was our conversation about um, maybe an overarching entity or helping to coordinate more neighborhood associations to kind of have like a, a neighborhood leader or champion mm -hmm. that would also in in an ideal world function as kind of like a representative who is more in contact with the city and then can disperse more information among their communities so that news gets out um in an earlier more efficient way so that maybe participation uh is less mm -hmm. Yeah, it's earlier. Less advice, yeah, because earlier. Yeah, and people feel heard. Yeah. And they can also plan events. Right. Definitely. Or, or short of associations, maybe just groups. Sure. Because on one hand, you definitely want to do that, but on the other hand, there's always been the hesitancy to create another layer of review and approval. So you got to go oh. people in, front, in front of the neighborhood board, then you go in front of the planning commission, then you, that type of thing. So, I didn't realize that neighborhood associations have boards and such. Well, just that 
in areas in larger cities. In yeah. Minneapolis. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have friends on their neighborhood boards in Minneapolis and wow. it's intense. Very yep. dramatic sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So fracture responsibility. Yeah. So yeah, maybe don't use the word association to find something. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah. The champions. Yeah. They were collaborators. Yeah. <laughs> Organizers. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Or the name of the champions. <laughs> champions. <laughs> we can have a team song. Yeah. Rocky. We can have an annual competition to see which neighborhood got the That's... best team song. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> they each have to have a float in the parade. Yeah. <laughs> Eurovision for one <laughs> So are there any other elements that we feel are missing or can be strengthened? Is there anything that we can capture? I don't know how to get it in there, but I I just didn't get a super strong sense of like accountability to the public within this. Like I know it's ingrained in everything that we've been talking about. Uh, it's just been like nothing really screamed like this is all here to benefit. Maybe I'm just too deep into it too. So, all right, just to jump in, I think that one of the things that's missing from going through the goals and objectives and the strategy sections of all of these different subsets of the comp plan is when we're actually crafting the document, we get to include a lot of contextualization beforehand. Lovely. So we get to talk about things like we heard from the public during the phase one engagement and through the subcommittee process through our steering committee that accountability of government to the public is important. To that end, we are encouraging things like two-year strategic plans of the city council so that we can find common ground for alignment of the goals and principles or the goals and strategies that are outlined forthwith. Love and, and going so on and so forth. Um, and that context, the way that Carlos and I have been discussing laying this out over time, is going to be on a chapter by chapter basis. So it's going to include a lot of really common elements throughout the different chapters of the comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. but it's going to be tailored to the individual goals and objectives of those sections. So accessible government will, of course, be intertwining things like empowering the public and having an equity lens more actually or improving equity throughout the community by allowing access to underserved and under, underrepresented sorry we're not using the phrase the varying identities and the backgrounds of, of the people of the city of Winona similarly we're going to use a similar line for things like transportation talking about having equitable more equitable access via sidewalks on both sides of the street to xyz so you'll see a lot of that coming through and our goal and we're still discussing this process a little bit is when that first draft comes out and we have our subcommittees able to all walk through and provide additional feedback then you'll be able to say listen i'm still not getting that that feeling of accountability coming from that context maybe you should add line abc you know um, is there any kind of or do you do now or any kind of citizen survey uh you want the report card every two years or or three years or something like that so that you can get you know number one you know you, it's typical you have you know transportation public safety you know plan whatever it is you know environment all that kind of stuff and you just get a gauge on how well the city's doing and what their pain points are um, i think it's a great and recommendation you know, from the group they call it the uh the climate Survey. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Really, the climate, yeah, very confusing when I was just saying. Yeah. 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 I think that's a really good suggestion. Yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, when you're talking about accountability, that's kind of the scorecard, right? Yeah. 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 We feel that's okay. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this, yeah, I like data. So, you know, this gives you some data to work on. Yeah. So, that is another thing that I'm on the board of Healthy Lake Winona, and solid half an hour was just people sitting around the table, all like city report card. And, but they were, you know, of course, very specific about like phosphorus loading. Oh, and I was yeah. like, okay, well. <laughs> report card on board yeah 
and this, this plays in well with some of our other elements. Like I mentioned, we did heritage preservation earlier today, and they were talking about how soliciting feedback on the different programs they're recommending yeah. from historic district property owners and business owners mm -hmm. is going to be really beneficial mm -hmm. because right now we don't, again, we don't take the pulse yeah. of, of the public very often. Well, I mean, we're small enough, I mean, it's a little bit of money, but we're small enough to be able to send a direct request to everybody to fill out something and then see what happens. Oh, Carlos, I did. Initiate annual project and program evaluation reporting, develop city report card, uh, and budget or signage during and after project completion to indicate where the funds came from. Mm -hmm. So people see it and they're like, oh yeah, that's right, I did pay higher taxes for that, and I actually love it. Uh, yeah, those are USAID funds. Yeah. 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 Okay, got it. Do you want to send me what you just said? Can do. All right. Yeah, I, I kind of this specificity is that an, an actual survey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. all these auditoriums are trying to gauge their audience, mm -hmm. but they're all separate. Mm -hmm. and so you get a you know, one thing. And with, you know, engagement almost done that a million times. So, yep. you know, it's easy to farm out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Partnering with local organizations. There you go. Out. Two, two check marks. Two <laughs> check marks. <laughs> Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. That's right. All right. That would enhance our uh, interaction with the city. I think. So, great. Anything else? If it comes back, third class, well, we'll come to it. Yeah, exactly. 95% <laughs> of the people can vote. Whatever. That's from on, anything? Uh, any comments? Or? Yeah. All right. Or if you think of anything, just definitely let me know. And so what I'll do today is I will um, make further edits to this document here, and uh, I will resend it out to uh, committee members, and we'll plan on having our last meeting in another two weeks. And without one thing, though, that I wanted to throw there, where you're talking about outside partnerships and stuff, is there, I don't know if there's any nod to throw the county in there, mm -hmm. because I think... You know, so you can refer back, refer back to the copy complaint and say, hey, yeah. you, you agreed to kind of, and same on the county side too. I mean, no, this yep. is not just the city side, but yep. since you're dealing with the your plan, I mean, I, I think it would be, they should be a partner that yep. look to in that. If they're not listed, then, you know, it just, it, it doesn't kind of say the same thing. Exactly. So, Got it. That sounds sorry good. to no. submit a thought there. No, I think that's great. Great. All right. So I will go ahead and incorporate that as well as the other comments that we received today into another draft of this document. Two more weeks, we'll meet again for our final meeting, kind of bring everything together and then uh, figure out uh, who would like to present to the steering committee. Um, so it'll probably be somebody who's not in attendance today. <laughs> so they're not in attendance. Yeah, we'll volunteer them. Exactly. But we'll talk about that in another two weeks here. So that will put us out for our last meeting. The 30th. We'll be here. I do find some any comments. I'm like, John, I think, I think you are. Yeah, I just want to let you know. Here. Gotcha. So we'll plan on 4.30 on the 30th. And you can't enlist me when you're there to speak to the group, so. Okay. So I'm, I'm saying right now, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's not being there. It's a, it's a, oh, I thought you said you can no, listen. No, 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 I heard no, Hannah. No, well. I don't hear you. Too. I'm First glad you heard it. I want to have gone. That's good. Gotcha. Well, well, you're here now. So. All right. We are, yeah. Yeah. I know you guys. We'll all and tell you. It's right here. Yeah. All right, Brianna. Uh, another two weeks at 4 30. Thank you so much. Sounds good. See ya. Yeah, I don't know six. What? Well, the six. upcoming meeting was today meeting five or six. This was six.